Hey guys, I got some of my guitars laid out on a table. Uh, this is more interesting to do than you think, but welcome to an episode I've been wanting to do for a really long time called Headstocks 101. Now the headstock is a part that attaches to the neck and you can see there's a variety of them here. We've got different shapes. Uh, some of them are the same shape. Some of them are slightly different. There's the first one I ever made. It was actually an extension of the neck board. Uh, some people do that. I've put uh, bottle caps in them. I've made different styles with pennies in them and buffalo head nickels or whatever. Uh, but the bottom line on this lesson is we're going to learn how to make a number of these, attach them to the neck, and uh, basically size them, cut them, and put uh, graphics on them and attach them to the neck. So anything you want to know about a cigar box, headstock, you come to the right place. Let's get to the workbench. All right, first things first, got some North Mississippi All-Stars going on in the background. I saw them uh, first week in February uh, in Los Angeles. It was a great show. Um, that's what's going on in the background. If you want to link to that live performance, let me know. But the first thing we're going to talk about is what kind of wood do you want to use for your headstock and how long does it need to be? So we can exclude pieces that are too short or if there's characteristics about the wood that aren't desirable, um, let's get that out of the way first. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about different kinds of wood because all wood isn't the same. Now, I'm involved in the tree world and the plant world, and I can get this wood off of boxes all day long, plant boxes, and it looks like something I could use. It's kind of rustic, but the problem is, the closer you look at this, this come off the same board, and bingo, it splits very easily. Wherever they put the nails in right here is about where it splits, so this isn't a good choice. So again, being an arborist and understanding Latin, I like tulip poplar, I like oak, and I like maple. So when you see uh, Latin names, Latin names don't uh, lie. Latin's a dead language, that's why they use it. So you'll see this as being Liriodendron, you'll see oak as being Quercus, and you will see uh, maple being acer so look for that kind of thing and talk to your wood supplier but once you get to know that wood is heavy and it seems to be durable and it doesn't split go ahead and use that I mean the only way to tell is if a neck split or a headstock splits out later that's not going to be pleasant but the headstock and nine inches of wood isn't a place to be cheap believe me the next thing I want to talk to you about is how thick the wood is because stock it comes in different thicknesses uh, this is th thinner than this one obviously and so what difference does it make well putting your tuners on this one you've got a lot sticking up there to wrap your strings around where this one not so much see the hole is right there so I'm gonna have to take this one down probably off the back and sand it down or plane it down before I start so real quick, I did an episode about tuners. You want to know the distance between here and here and how that relates to the thickness of your board regardless of which type of tuner you use. So as I show you these boards, some of them were picked up scrap. Um, you can see that they all have different thicknesses starting off. Can you see all that? And again, the only thing that matters is Besides their strength, how much do you have to thin them down or plane them down to get the tuner to stick up where there's ample room for your strings? Now let's say you have a board that you do have to take some thickness off of and you don't want to wear out your belt sander. They have these gadgets called planers. They also have models that are more, they look like a box that sits upright on your bench. You're starting to get into three, dollars $400 for one there but they basically take a known measurement off the top of the wood here and how that works is there's blades that spin around right here 
And this right here, by turning this knob, you set the level of how much you want to take off in one pass. Now, my, my advice to you is, if you're using a small board and you're trying to do something like this, or let me make sure the camera's good here, and I'm trying, because you have to be flat like that until it, there, it hung up on the, the blades right there, you want to make sure that this is clamped down or something. So it's easier to do. If you do have to plane, I would suggest that the stock you're using be longer. Also, you want to remember that going at the start, you have to be very careful here. And when you're going through at the end, because if this drops down or whatever, you'll end up with a divot either up here or up here. So these things can be extremely dangerous if you don't pay attention to how you're using them. So there's a couple videos on YouTube that talk about how to use a planer, whether it's one of these handheld ones or one on that sits up on the bench. Believe me, the one that sits up on the bench is on my want list because you can just put the piece of wood through, pass it through, your hands go nowhere near anything, and then you just set the knob down on each pass and you get your wood down where it likes to be. Now, I can buy this Leary Dendron, this tulip poplar, and it's strong, and I've made a few necks out of this, or headstocks, excuse me, um, and I like this, but in order, you can see here, in order to make these the same, I'd have to take a lot out of this other one. I'm not just done with a planer. Let's talk a little bit about shapes of headstocks. You see, this one has a, kind of an old Gibson look to it. Um, this is a template I use again. Think about making templates for whatever um, you're doing. You can tell that I've made templates. So when I put dowels in my neck boards, or in my headstock scarf joints, I've got this one. When it comes to what goes onto the back of the guitar at the tailpiece where I put my strings and the canning lid and that apparatus, I've got a center mark here. So I just set this on the board at the end of the tailpiece and take a little bit and drill my holes. But templates are always good. Anyway, I've got a template here that I can use to uh, make me a Gibson style neck on pieces of a board about that wide down to about this wide. I've got uh, modifications of, of that one. You've seen this one on the coffee can guitar. Um, it's kind of like this, but a little bit different shape. And then I've done a very basic shape, which was, is like what used to be on the old, let me make sure these don't fall over, the old a Montgomery Ward airline guitar is made by K where I've just basically made a real simple shape Yeah, you've seen this one before This is a license plate Wyoming license plate guitar, but anyway Let's talk a little bit about if you find a shape that you like how to make a template Okay, I want to show you a little trick and this is gonna be one of them times I wish I had more hands than I do but let's get this stuff out of the way a little bit Let's say that there's a particular neck shape that I want to make like look at this it's a washburn five string fretless bass yeah don't be coveting the stuff I have in my shed I can't play guitar but I got this but let's say I like this headstock style but look it's wider than the board some of the boards I want to use or the scale of it in comparison to this neck width, my neck width here is going to be very much different. You see that? So, maybe I like this and I want to scale it down. Let me show you a trick on how to do that. I've got an antique milk can supporting the other side of the guitar, the body, Go Wisconsin. Um, but I've got this set on the bench and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wind these down a little bit and make sure that they're all flat this way. And then I'm going to take a piece of cardstock, like so, and I'm going to take these pencils that won the election for me, landslide, and I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to trace this around here. Now, I know that these tuners are going to get in the way. That's an obvious, but I'm just going around like so. 
And I know I've been told that my me being right-handed doesn't always work out with the way I got the camera. But anyway, I've taken this and I've traced it out like that. You see that? So now again, I'm going to show you that this just barely fits some of the stock that I have. Some of it's okay. But again, the scale of it down here is a little bit big for my liking. And so, what I need to be able to do is scale this the way I want. So, I'm going to go along and darken this up like so and draw in roughly where the tuners were blocking me. It's probably best to do this with a sharpie or something. But anyway, you get the idea. So I, I'm going to end up with this on a piece of cardstock. Now I'm going to take this and go to my scanner and put it upside down, scan it, and I'm going to take that image and put it on my flash drive. Then I'm going to take that image and open it up on a computer. I'm going to go to a computer right now and show you how to do that really quickly. Again, all of this is in the episode called Graphics. So when I buzz through it on the computer, I'm going to do it fast. Go back and give me a hit and a like on that Graphics episode. I'll give you a link right up here right about now okay now we're in the house we're at a computer i got some rt in the 44s playing in the background there my friend rt valine is in oklahoma um, i'm going to give you a link to their music uh, and you'll notice that there's been a lot of oklahoma talk about some of my guitars lately so uh, who knows what surprise that might hold anyway you'll remember that when we were out in the shed we traced a guitar headstock and put it on a piece of cardstock we scanned that to a flash drive. Now I've put that flash drive, let's plug it into the computer. You're going to see the file pop up. Now I've done a, a, an episode called Graphics and it shows you how to do this, but it dropped into this file right here called HP Scans. I found the scan now. And what I've done is I've right clicked on the file and opened it in Paint. And what do you know? Let's see if we can not zoom in on that a little bit. There, right there, is our headstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the select tool here and I am going to grab just around, barely around the edges of that. I'm going to, and now I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go to Microsoft Word and I've opened up a file here. Um, I'm going to tell it on the insert command. I hope you can see it up here. It's insert. Over here it gives me an option to insert a text box. I'm going to insert a simple text box and I'm going to drag it over here to this page and I'm going to follow the guides. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure when I'm in the view, go to view and click on ruler. See that up there, ruler. And you'll see a ruler pop up here and here. Again, if you're using the English system, this will pop up an inch as you can change this in your settings or whatever. But I'm going to grab this text box because I know my wood is about four inches uh, wide. And I've told you that I want to do about eight and a half inches. So I come down to here and you can see the four and the about eight and a half is highlighted. Now I'm going to right click because I've copied that, um, that heads stock and boom what do you know there it is now if i need to resize this i'm kind of looking at the edge here saying okay that's an inch that's a little bit more i can grab this text box and pull this this way and then size this a little bit bigger now the reason i use a text box is because if you just try to dump the graphic onto the page it becomes very cumbersome to work with and resize so always do that in a text box um, now what i can do is i can take a look at um, printing this out on a card stock and then i can use it as a template uh, but again the function here is i can make this uh, just any size i want by dragging it here and i can use the ruler function to tell me where i'm at now if i want to make this 
uh, shorter this way and it's five and a half inches or three and a half inches whatever I want to do but anyway we're gonna do this one at eight and a half uh, by four and that's gonna give us what we need we print that out we lay this out on a piece of a uh, top of an old thin cigar box and cut it out and we've got our template and of course you want to remember to hit save I want to show you here that um, uh, I've got a text box over here that once I know uh, how big my headstocks are on the box and stuff I can just basically take this is for a coffee can guitar headstock they're a little bit smaller I just simply can um, cut this graphic out put a new one in um, size the text box any way I want uh, paste that back in and size it so this is a really good way to do this if you have a paper template what you might think about doing is when you draw this out you might use some sticky tape on a piece of a uh, spare thin a cigar box would and lay that on there because if you do that and cut it out you will have the template next time so one more time on that if this is paper and you haven't cut this yet go ahead and put double sticky tape on this like so center it up and then draw it out make sure it doesn't move and then when you cut this out you will end up having a template to use next time you don't have to reinvent the wheel any every time so so once i've got this on here i'm gonna make sure I might have a little bit of room up there i want to play with in case i need to sand this i don't want to put it right up to the edge in case there's a little mistake i drop it down like that i put a mark down here and take a straight edge and do that that can come off on a, a chop saw and then I'm going to lay it at, a, at an angle because I know about three inches of this is going to be my scarf joint. I did an episode on scarf joints and I also did an episode on how to build a scarf joint jig for a chop saw uh, instead of trying to cut these on a table so I, I showed you how to do uh, a chop saw which basically goes from here to three inches from here and then cuts your scarf joint angle like so see that so this is one that's already been done this one up here like this I know that the edge of the scarf joint needs to be right there anyway let's take a look at the chop saw real quick and I'll show you what the jig looks like here's that jig I was telling you about look for the episode called how to build a scarf joint jig and the features of this are basically it's got this piece right here that locks it into here I can use this clamp here that swings around to put that down it's got a 15 degree angle which is set by this board and then I just clamp whatever I want right onto here with a clamp that's out of the way of the guard coming down um, I think Del Puckett did a version of this where he's got something here that lets you get rid of this in case you don't have this it clamps on to here or something like that that's a good idea but anyway you set the length of your board it can always be longer in fact it's probably better uh, than to cut it exactly what it needs to be so before you cut the end of it off cut this and you can see that this just comes down and cuts at a 15 degree angle I can blow these out one right after the other both neck and headstock so this is a headstock with a scarf joint cut into it okay so do I want to cut this out now or later uh, I like to cut it out in a little bit here because there's still something for me to do now you can see that I've got my neck I've got the scarf joint cut into it this sits right here gives me the angle I'm gonna want you see that and what I've done is I've marked the neck to find the center mark. I've done that there and on the underside of the neck, can you see that? And also on my headstock, I've done a center mark there and I know where this is. So I'm going to lay this on here. I'm not going to glue it yet because there's something I want to do. So I'm going to clamp this here. You notice that there's holes there already, that triangular shaped pattern that I talked about 
and strengthening your heel and in the other episodes I've done about scarf joints now I've told you I like building templates to hang on the wall on a nail I can just take this lay that on there like so clamp it if I need to and then I just run a drill through here like so and it gives me the marks I need on the neck and here so I'm gonna make sure that that's lined up I'm gonna make sure that this is smooth right here and that everything in the back lines up as well you see that so now I'm gonna take my drill and I'm just gonna give myself a little mark on the neck board on each one of these holes because that's ultimately where I'm going to dowel my headstock onto my neck when I glue it. I did I did a, a show called Case of the Slipping Scarf Joint and that's what that's all about. Now again, checking to make sure that everything is lined up right and that my holes have gone all the way through here. I'm going to take my doweling and make sure that my bit is just about the same size as the doweling. I want that to be tight and not loose. And I'm going to run this. My phone quits ringing. I'm going to take those pilot holes and drill them all the way through while this is clamped down like so. Now I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to go cut this out on my scroll saw. This would be much harder to do if I did it before I cut this out. I've got more stuff to clamp to and these holes are ready now so all I got to do is make sure that this is smooth, this is smooth and when I come back with this cut out it'll be just sticking over a little bit so I can shape it later. But I'll be able to put some glue on there, like so, and then just push the dowel through and line this neck up and let it dry. Okay, I've talked a little bit about scroll saws before. Um, first thing we want to do is make sure everything is unplugged so we're not uh, cutting our fingers off. But we're going to bounce this guard up here to where it's just above the wood. I want to be able to move this around, but not too much. As this is up, this will start doing this and flopping around. Then your cuts will be bad. But when I start cutting, I'm going to be just outside of my lines and give myself some room to work. So let's see what this looks like. You want to remember, I have this on a foot pedal, plus I have a speed control. Let me see if I can do that right here. There's a speed control right here where I control how fast the blade is going. And I've got this rigged to there we go we're back can I see that yeah I've got this rig to a foot pedal so I can just stop it and start it anytime you make adjustments to the thing or change the blade or take the blade off if you're doing F holes I did a an episode about F holes where I had to take the blade off you always want to unplug this thing and get that foot feet away from your foot okay so I got my foot pedal here I've got this on and see that blade is going really slow so if I take my speed control on the machine and get it where I want it to be like about so now I just every time I take my pedal foot off that pedal it stops so I'm going to hold this down carefully keep my fingers away from anything and cut this out Alright, it's a little bit rough and needs some sanding, but there it is. Now I'm going to do a little bit of sand in here. Uh, not too much on this end, but I'm going to try to uh, put this in shape as much as I can a little bit here before I glue it on the neck because it's a lot easier to work this piece uh, when the neck's not attached. But this one, I'm going to wait 
until it's attached to the neck and then I can figure out how much needs to come off here and especially how to make this radius um, match up. Again, I always try to use the belt sander radius and match it as much as I can here when I'm doing my work, um, even up here on stuff like this, because it lets me know if I've got marks that are supposed to line up like here and here, I know when I'm about right on. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of work here with the volume down so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then we'll have a look. Okay, we are back at the bench now. Um, you can see that this will stick out a little bit more uh, here at the, at the edges. I can uh, work that later uh, and cut that down. But this, might, this part of it's pretty well done. Notice I haven't put the holes in for the tuners yet because I'm, I've got some stuff to figure out here where that logo is going to go up here, that emblem, where the graphics is going to go and where I want to put those holes. But what we're going to do now is we are going to glue this up by basically just like on the heels episode and on the slipping scarf joint. We're going to put some glue in here, glue this up, put the dowels in it, and then clamp it. Now before I put my tight bond on uh, this surface here, I'm going to squirt just a little bit of this glue down into here into these holes because I want to make sure that the dowels are going to go in there pretty tight. I want them to have glue on them before I push the dowel through because if I don't, It'll just squeegee that off, but I'm putting my tight bond on here now. And again, doing it this way allows you to uh, put this on and not worry about it slipping. We had some good tips come in from people that said that they were um, using grit and different things. Um, but once that's on there, I can just cut this off a little bit high and I'm going to want to make sure I don't cut my fingers off here but leave it sticking out a little bit. We'll turn that over like so. Stick that one in. Make sure there's some sticking off the bottom and then the final one slips through. Okay, I've... Uh, clamp this and made sure that there's no glue sticking out again I'll have to cut those off later let's put this other clamp on here so while I'm waiting for this to dry um, I've marked off on the headstock remember I'm going to put a badge on here a route 66 badge because these are going to Oklahoma both the coffee can and the license plate guitar and uh, this is how they come from the supplier MGB um, they got that burn mark on the back I really like that it looks rust rusty but of course that wouldn't be the edge you want to use um, I've taken and uh, painted this um, with acrylic paint uh, taken a sharpie and gone down in here and then put some uh, light red paint mixed with some gray uh, and dabbed it on there with a piece of corner of a piece of paper towel to make it look like rust so well, I'm waiting for this to dry I'm going to put this up here and you can see I've traced out where the badge is going to go because then I need to figure out where my tuner holes are going to be whether I need to incorporate the tuners into there so that middle mark right there lines up there. I've got another one uh, down here. I don't know if you can see it there. And so I just trace this out and it gives me an idea of where I'm going to place my tuners, which is going to be about here and here and here. We 
get this to set up. We'll cut off our dowels. We'll sand them down. Um, we've got our holes marked out for where our tuners need to go. Uh, and once that's all done, we can uh, put our fingerboard on like it's twin here. All right, a final shout out uh, to the Music Tips. North Mississippi All-Stars is always uh, one of my favorite groups. And then check this out. You're going to like it. RT in the 44s. Anyway, my subscribe button is going to come up here in a second along with playlists. I'm going to try to group uh, my playlist now where you can get all the neck stuff in one, the headstock stuff in another, um, the odd instruments in another. Uh, but don't forget to subscribe and check out my Facebook page, Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitars. Shout out to Tim Lohman for this logo. And it's finally over. I will see you soon.